year of about $120,000, which, which includes the contingency to shoreline restoration, and the money is in place. So this could be approved tonight, and uh, the work can get started uh, in the fall. So uh, we're looking for an approval on that. Any questions? With no questions on that, Madam Chair, I will uh, turn it over to the town attorney. Thank you so much. Uh, Mark, before you do that, is there anything else that you want to add about the storm and uh, anything at all about uh, uh, the preparedness of our community. Is there anything else you would like yeah, to Yeah, I was going to do that. I was going to do it toward the end, but I'll be happy to do it now. Yeah. Um, obviously, the kudos has already gone out to, uh, to, to all the. Uh, so, what I what I want to say though is this: is that um, I sent you both the uh, action reports from both the police department uh, and the uh, Highway Parks Division. And if you look at both of those, they have the they say the same thing. They say the fact that without the teamwork of the town of Southington, this would not have been anywhere near as successful as we think it was from our end. And I, I don't want to, you know, obviously there was some failures, uh, mainly uh, on the, uh, the area of the utility aspects of it. And of course, there's always things that we can do better. But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, between the coordination that we have for our emergency management division uh, and the training that we go through for this, um, I think it worked out very, very well. Um, if anything needs to be improved, uh, not necessarily communication between ourselves, but certainly communication between ourselves and the utilities. Uh, and I'm just not talking about, obviously, one utility. We, have, we deal with uh, three separate, four separate utilities in the town. So that being said, I spoke with the chair today, and we are going to have what's called a hot wash uh, with my group, which is the emergency management group, to figure out what went right, what went wrong, and then we're going to go to the next level and talk to uh, members of the council, uh, talk to probably some of our state reps to ask what, if anything, uh, the plans are to streamline the process for our main utility, uh, which is Eversource here. And I know that, that uh, certainly you cannot fault the online workers at Eversource. They worked their butt off. When they got here um, and when they started uh, really, really moving on this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, nobody worked harder than they did. So that being said, uh, there are good things that were done. Um, there are things we can always approve. Now, I think the most beneficial thing, and uh, I believe Paul and Mike already touched on this, is that early on, uh, probably our first meeting on this, uh, our first actual action meeting on this was Tuesday morning before the storm, and it was the general consensus of our executive committee which consists not only of the, the chiefs, myself, but my, depart, my key department heads, um, we, just, we discussed two things. Number one is having everyone standing by, and more importantly, um, we decided at that point to keep the transfer station open as long as necessary. And at that point, we decided to keep that open. It turned out to be all of last week and not all of this week. Um, anyone who went down the transfer station will tell you uh, that that place was probably the busiest place in Southington. So that being said, uh, I can't thank my team enough. Um, I know that uh, I know that some council people felt that they were being tamed in the behind, but the bottom line is there was some information that I received from several council people that was not on our on our work charts. So you receive information that we don't necessarily receive. So I would say probably a good 15 or 20 percent of the information I received from the council was not on. Our DPW charts was not on the, the police department charts, was not on the fire department charts, it was not on every air sources chart. So that being said, that's one of the areas that we're going to work on. But please don't ever think that you're bothering myself and that uh, Chief Butler, Chief Bailey, by emailing us because obviously we, if we already have it, that's fine. We just dismiss it. But if we don't have it, we add it on. So that being said, we could always get better. Um, but I can tell you. Um, Probably since the uh, the October storm of 2011, uh, I have not seen the town mobilized in this fashion. So uh, I couldn't be more proud of, of, of my crew and uh, and your crew. Uh, they work very very hard and are still working very very hard. And I couldn't be more proud. Of them. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we all um, agree with you on that. Uh, they've been incredible. Thank you. Uh, our town attorney's report, please. 
Good evening, Madam Chair. Uh, the first thing on my report is the tax abatement outside the enterprise zone. I believe our economic development uh, director did a great job explaining this, but uh, just in general for any uh, counselors or any general public that doesn't really understand uh, or not familiar with the tax abatements, uh, these tax abatements are here to provoke the development of land or taxable property that may not have normally been invested in without these uh, tax abatements. Um, as you heard before, historically, these tax abatements are given to new personal or real property on the grand list. Um, in addition, procedurally, how it happens is uh, someone would approach uh, the economic development director. Um, he would then take this to the committee, and um, the committee then recommends it to the town council, which we're doing tonight for your approval. Um, so that's just a general background of what the tax abatements are and what the procedural um, method is. I don't know if anybody has any further questions, but like I said, I think Lou did a great job explaining this. Okay, very good. Any questions for the town attorney? Okay, here we go. Uh, Jeremy, can you go on to the marketing contract? Sure. The next thing I just want to talk briefly about, which we heard the presentation from Gregory Scheiner, who's the account director for Rebel here in Southington. Um, I, 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 have to, I have to agree with uh, Councilman Del Santo as well as Lou that I, I think this is just a, I read over the proposal, I worked with all of them together with this to hammer out some details, but I just think this is a great thing for the town of Sunnington and the business of Sunnington. Um, it's going to be a one-year contract for right now. Um, we're, we expect it to be very successful, and if it is, you know, we'll look at continuing this. But right now, all we're uh, committing ourselves is to a one-year contract. Um, we saw the website design, but there's going to be a lot much more than that. I just think, um, you know, Rebel Interactive Group, a local uh, town-owned business, is, is just going to do a great job, and I think this is what our businesses in town need right now with everything that's going on. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, does anyone have a question to the panel? Okay. I have a, I have a question. Sure. Uh, thank you, Attorney Pitt. Can you just uh, specify the, so it's a one-year contract, can you just specify the dollar amount on it? Well, we have a cap on it of $44,000 altogether. That's for all the administrative, that's for the web design, that's for, um, you know, everything that's going to go into this, and that's what we told them they have to hold themselves to. So we're not investing anything more than that. That's going to be our cap. Um, they believe they can do a great job for that in a one-year period of time. Um, we could have chosen a shorter duration, but we thought, or a longer duration, but we thought one year is, is a great point to start off at, and they feel they can get um, our goals accomplished within that one period of time in that dollar amount. Okay. And if year one is successful, um, will it come back to the council, or will it be something that will just be, um, will go into the town manager's budget, or how how is that uh, plan being worked out? I'm I'm not sure. I believe we have to come back to the council. Mark, do you uh, let me just let me say that. Let me talk that. Uh, right now, in room's budget, um, he has a marketing line item. And the marketing line, if you recall, we added money to it. It was thirty thousand. We had we put fifty thousand in this year, so it's twenty thousand more in anticipation of having this contract. So next year, um, obviously, if, uh, if we want to continue, we would keep this fifty thousand dollars in the marketing budget uh, for this particular contract. If he felt he needed more money to do other marketing besides this, then he would request more. But the budget currently has fifty thousand in it, which covers this contract. Okay. Yeah, it'd be good. So right around the budget time next year, we should have a discussion about this, this service and see how it went and then go from there. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, right. The intention was that the Economic Strike Committee would review it uh, and then recommend uh, to Lou when he does his budget whether he should add uh, money back in there or not. And then, of course, his budget would then go through the, through the council and the Board of Finance. So, good. Thank you. Okay, very good. Anybody else? All right, thank you, uh, Attorney uh, Taylor. We're going to be moving now into public communication. Uh, I would ask you to understand that there's a five-minute limit on our public communication. You must be a citizen of Southington. 
you will be uh, led in by uh, Paul Chaplinsky, and um, please give your name and address. And uh, as always, we just ask uh, uh, for respectful dialogue. Thank you so much. Uh, Paul, uh, let's open up the, the floodgates for our public communication. Okay, great. Uh, let's see, Madam Chair, what I'd like to do with your permission is and now that it's public communications, I'd like to open up the chat and allow people to enter their name into the chat who are uh, on the computer, and uh, they can put their name in to say that they would like to speak so we can have a, a queue there. Is that okay? I think that would be fine, and then we'll close it down afterwards. That's fine, yep. Okay, so if anybody that's on the computer uh, would like to uh, speak, please take your computer off mute and maybe just type in the chat function that you'd like to talk or just go ahead and start talking. If we have more than one person, then you can type in the chat function and get in a virtual line. Okay, Madam Chair, it looks like uh, Nick Rinaldi and then Tony Mazzarella. Okay, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you to the council for uh, giving me a few minutes. <clears throat> I know I've um, communicated previously to the council via email, uh, and I'm calling in to talk about an issue that uh, seems to be a big problem, not just for the town of Southern, but for the state of Connecticut. And that's the uh, black bear problem that uh, a lot of uh, towns and communities are facing. Uh, it's a big problem for us in the farming very drive uh, um, neighborhood. Uh, there's two, three, four bears that, that come around sometimes three, four times a day. Um, my wish was to have some sort of ordinance that would prohibit uh, the feeding of, of bears uh, or, or you know, just putting food out for animals. Um, I have a particular neighbor that feels it's not enough to just have a bird feeder, but they have a picnic table out there with, uh, that they spread bird seed on about four or five times a day. And um, it's a real issue. Uh, for people that want to spend some time outdoors, uh, that I have my grandkids here two days a week, and uh, you know, every time they see the bears, they, uh, they get scared. we got to go shop and go inside, you know. Um, uh, I, I know there are other towns, like the town of Sydney uh, that are passed on mentions regarding uh, banning bird feeders and things like that. Um, I've spoken to the, uh, door, uh, the director of the uh, DEEP, the, the state of Connecticut, and uh, they, the director is going town to town, and they're encouraging towns to pass these types of ordinances. Um, I'm also talking to my, my uh, state senator and, and, my, and my state rep, regarding a state ordinance. So I really think that cutting off the food source would, would eliminate the, the issue. And um, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. So thank you. Thank you very much. I know it's a very serious thing. We, we make jokes about it, but uh, encouraging wild animals like black bears uh, can have a very devastating effect should uh, something go wrong in all uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will uh, take this up. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Nick. It looks like uh, Tony Mazzarella, and then after Tony, we have uh, Christina Volpe and Joan Heroy. Tony, floor is yours. Thanks, Paul. Um, thank you, Madam Chair and Council Members. Um, I, I just wanted to... Um, oh, yeah. Sorry. I always do that. Don't I? <laughs> Anthony Mazzarella, 115 Johanna Circle. Um, so, I, I, I'm, I wanted to bring to attention, um, I, I'm concerned that the chair's work email address was used in a coordinated campaign to collect public comments in support of keeping the Columbus statue. Um, the e a work email address was used instead of the town council distribution or even uh, the chair's official town email. Um, by Senator, State Senator Sampson, by the Southington Republican Town Committee, and by others. Uh, this is not transparent government and raises significant concerns. First, people's personal information is now on Hartford Healthcare servers when it was intended to be a town issue. 
Uh, this complicates compliance with any potential Freedom of Information Act requests. And frankly, we have no idea if any submissions were omitted or filtered from the record. This is not appropriate governance, and yet another illustration that there are still challenges with ensuring transparency and inclusive governance by the majority of the council. So I, I just, again, concerned about how this played out, and I hope that this sort of um, behavior can be uh, improved upon in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Christina Volpe? Good evening, um, respectfully, Madam Chair and the entire, um, everybody here tonight. My name is Christina Hulte. I'm at 161 Oakland Road, and as many of you know, I am an elected commissioner on the PVC, but I'm here as a citizen um, and as a granddaughter and as a historian. Um, when I last spoke to each of you, I outlined a more thoughtful way of commemorating Italian-American heritage and just immigrant heritage in our town. Um, so if I may, with the remainder of my time, I'm going to read a little something that I wrote. Um, I have been told a lot since um, I started my efforts in this town that I'm a little bit too optimistic. Um, and I'm going to keep going for that, but with the most respect that I can muster in my less than 30 years, um, what is the future of this town going to look like when each of you sitting here right now are gone? I worry about that for my nine-year-old daughter, who's going on 19 and is all too aware of what's happening here in town far too often. She asks me a lot what the history of our town is, and I write them every single day. I work in resource management or heritage preservation, so um, I have a master's degree in this work. I've worked with museums like the Mattituck and Waterbury doing exactly this, and it is a turning point in both heritage tourism and both in the way that we take pride in our community to ensure that we are commemorating our ancestors in meaningful ways. And now, I might have said this a little too harshly at the last meeting, or maybe it got drowned out by the mess that was the rest of that meeting, but I do not feel like we are thoughtfully commemorating our ancestors in this community with a statue that seems to be there. I'm going to be honest with you guys, for just personal ego and vanity at this point, because when I look at it, I'm not going to know about those Italians that made that journey to be here. I don't know the history of the town, and in 50, 20, 15 years from now, my daughter won't either. And if, her, if the history curriculum is changing at all the way that I see it changing, it's going to be even more of an embarrassment when she's in my age as it is there, and that there are no other ways to do it. Now, when we are all gone, our narrative cease, truly. They matter for many years, but I've read archival documents that have seen me go through people's lives from childhood to death, and I will tell you right now that the only thing you have when you go is the grace that you leave behind. If you do not find a way to commemorate those Italians, and the ideas that I outlined in my letter, I spent like 20 hours researching the five Italians that came to this town. You can go back to the letter. We have a very easy way to remediate and do this differently. We don't have to do what other towns are doing. We don't have to be contentious about it. But I will implore you that if you're going to leave that statue, then you put your words into actions and, and find another way. I literally gave you one, so you can hit me up and ask me to outline that again for you. But much like we have the legacy books in, in the center of Southington, we have an opportunity to do the same exact thing near the walking trail and promote heritage tourism, and yet we're, we're convoluting the dichotomy of this argument to the point where nothing will be done. And so we're going to breeze over this because it's not on the topic of the issue anymore. And the vanity of your own egos will be planted for now. But what about my daughter and me? I'll tell you right now, I don't give a hoot about my last name. I care that my grandmother, though, Beatrice Volpe, is battling her second round of cancer. That my daughter's turning nine and Attilio Volpe came to this country in the 1970s and put the first garage on Queen Street. All that stuff is very important. But it won't mean a lick of nothing if we forget about it. And it doesn't matter if it's not commemorated. So how hard they all work, is it actually going to matter if there's not a place where my daughter could go one day and read all the names of all the other Italians from all the regions, all the other people, the Czech Republicans. I heard some people who said, well, my ancestor came from Poland. Great. We have an opportunity to create a heritage space for commemoration that goes beyond Christopher Columbus's legacy. And I'm not saying that to personally demoralize the statue. I'm a historian. I understand why it was put up. I do. 
So you have a discourse here in your community that's asking for you to do something more meaningful. And I, I really implore you all to do it because the stories that you get to come is beyond your service to this town are not going to matter unless you find a way to make them matter. This moment will blur into a bunch of other moments. And I, and I really love this town so much that I want to hope that we can come together and do something that really is a beautiful way to thank all of those people who are buried in our cemeteries, who are still here, that are not being remembered. It's not enough to say that we have a museum. It's not enough to say we have the barns. You have an opportunity right now to do something truly wonderful, to take this situation and do something about it. Please do not just send another message out to this community. Please do not let it breathe over. Well, look at that. The Bay Club really had me on time. Okay, thank you. I respect all of you. I really do. But please do something because this is just out of and, control. And thank you, Christina. And your uh, your memo was uh, was appreciated. You you cited the Lewis, the Port, the uh, the Porta, and the uh, Fontana families, uh, and that's part of the record. So we appreciate that. And by the way, uh, wishing your grandmother. Uh, Speedy recovery and much else. Prayers to her, okay? I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, Joan Hurley's up next, and following Joan, it looks like Stephanie Mitchell. So, Joan, the floor is yours. Hi, good evening. A respectful good evening to Madam Chair and the members of the Southington Town Council. Um, I, too, am here to talk about the Columbus statue. And... Um, one of the prominent arguments that has been going on is about um, about keeping the Columbus statue is that its removal would be um, the erasure of history, which is ironic, um, considering that most statues and monuments um, were built to construct and pre preserve a version of history that remains flawed. Um, Further, it's also disingenuous to claim that Columbus is merely a symbol of, of um, Italian ingenuity and pride. Um, Christopher Columbus has come under close scrutiny in the last several decades, and rightly so. Many now question the mythology associated with Columbus, and have found he does not deserve to be honored symbolically in a statue or otherwise, in a public space like our municipal center. Um, as we previously stated, Columbus was an oppressor who brutalized and stigmatized a group of people who to this day remain in a struggle against such brutalization. Um, the argument to, to honor Columbus on public land are the same arguments with the same indignation that the Ku Klux Klan used in its opposition to the civil rights movement. Where is the active indignation? for repeated episodes of police violence, racism, injustice, and systemic inequality that is the d direct legacy of Columbus and his collective atrocities. I'll tell you where the symbolic indignation is. It's in the statement that the Southington Town Council released um, about justice and diversity not long after the horrific and dehumanizing murder of George Floyd. As the town council, you said you stood with those who were tired and hopeless due to longstanding issues with racism, violence, and injustice throughout the United States and here in Southington. You acknowledge that you must do more. You must listen with compassion. You must have different, difficult conversations, and you must condemn racism in all forms. Your actions, you said, must speak louder than your words. They must be meaningful, you said, against systemic forms of in, in, intimidation and injustice, and must actually fight racial injustice. Your statement recognized that mere words are symbolic. It's action that is needed. The Columbus statue, too, is symbolic of the decimation of the ongoing decimation and dehumanization of indigenous people from 1492 to present day. Columbus is the founding father in North America of systemic racism. In your statement, as individual and collective members of the Southington Town, town Council, you worded a rejection of longstanding racism in our, uh, against our town, uh, against longstanding racism in our town. This statement was especially heartening 
to the children of Southington, many of whom are children of color who have felt silenced and excluded in school and in town. So I have to ask you as the Southington Town Council, Huh? Oh, we somehow have lost contact with yeah. It looks like Ms. Hurley's connection is, uh, is poor. Okay. Uh, how, how much time do we have on, the, on Ms. Shirley's box? About one minute. Okay. So, Madam Chair, I would propose that we go to the next person, and if Ms. Shirley has a better connection, we can give her the minute. Okay. Sure. It looks like she might be back now. Okay. Where was I cut off? Because I don't know. Um, it started to break up when you started to talk about, uh, I think, the actions. I think it was once she formed the founding father of systemic racism. Thank right you for after. repeating that. Yes. Okay, he was. So on this was the founding father of systemic racism in North America. And in your Southington Town Council statement, individually and collectively, you worded a rejection of longstanding racism in the United States and in our town, and this is especially heartening for the children of Southington, many of whom are children of color, who have felt silenced and excluded in and So I have to ask you, are your words symbolic, or will your actions represent listening, growth, and anti-racism and I certainly hope that actions speak louder than symbolic words and that the Columbus statue is removed from public property in Southington. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Shirley. Uh, Stephanie Mitchell is up next. Stephanie, did you need me to take you off of you? Let's see, where are you? Sorry, Madam Chair, but I don't see Stephanie Mitchell's name in the list any longer. I'm not sure if she's now a call-in user. Oh, um, I see her at the back. Hold on. Stephanie, how about now? Can you hear us? Can we hear you now? We show that you're unmuted now. Maybe your microphone's not working. Okay, I think we had the same audio problem last time. Okay. Stephanie, we're trying to get you in. Um, maybe if you call back, I don't know what the problem is. Can you hear me right now? Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much. I apologize. I don't know what it is with my audio. Um, my name is Steph no, thank you. Um, my name is Stephanie Mitchell. I'm at 177 Miller Farm Road in Sansville. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the Southington Town Council. Um, I really would like to talk about the Columbus statue, but I will be fairly brief. Um, I find it um, sketchy for the, for the emails to be requested to be sent to Chairwoman Triano's work email address and not the town email address um, by the Republican Town Committee and by Senator Rob Sampson. I've seen that posted on social media. Uh, it smells of impropriety to say that to, the, to say the least about that. Um, and regarding the debacle um, over the, uh, the Columbus statue, it's quite interesting as it clearly reflects the disrespect and dishonesty that those at the First Social Justice Coalition's community conversation were speaking to. Uh, the feelings of exclusion in the community expressed by students of color aren't surprising, given the rhetoric of the folks who pretend that the Columbus statue has no meaning beyond Italian-American pride. I implore you um, to please remove the statue off of public property. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Ms. Mitchell. 
in Madam Chair. It doesn't look like anybody else who's on the computer is um, looking to speak. Is there anybody else on the computer looking to speak? You can either unmute your computer now or type it in the chat box. Okay. Madam Chair, if uh, if it's okay, what I'll do is I'll, I'll unmute the – it looks like we have a little bit more than seven or eight people who are on the phone. We can unmute the call-in users and uh, see if anybody on the phone would like to speak. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. We've unmuted the uh, we've unmuted the looks like six call-in speakers. Is there anybody on the phone who would like to speak during the public communications? Hi. Yes, I'd like to speak. Okay. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi. My name is Brandon Brush. I live at 120 South End Road. Hi, Brandon. Floor is yours. Hey. Um. I just wanted to. Uh, I just had a question actually. Um. This is just because in regards to the, at the beginning of this, you mentioned, uh, someone mentioned a special meeting that came up after Hartford passed the police accountability bill. Um, and there was a special meeting and everything. Um, and a letter was sent to Hartford. I, I was just curious where information was regarding that meeting. Um, and just in general, I guess it was kind of a note. Um, I know you're kind of working on marketing and, and, and focusing on stuff like that. And I know that. During the Columbus uh, public hearing, you mentioned how, you know, it was great to see so many people involved in the local government, and you hope to get this level of engagement in the future. Um, and I just kind of want to make a note that some of the things that you're having meetings for, uh, they're a little inaccessible in terms of hard to find the information about. Um, after you mentioned that meeting, I went to the Southington Southern, the, the Facebook page just to see if you had posted it on the – not not Southington Talk, but like the town of Southington Facebook page where you post all your memos and everything to see if you had posted it. I didn't see anything there. Um, so I'm just curious that maybe I'm not looking in the right spot. Is there a place where you're more vocal about what is coming up? Uh, even you mentioned the Social Justice Coalition information being on the website, and I can't find that on the website anywhere either. Um, I actually had a message to Dave Salvo and see if he could send it to me, and he said he couldn't find it on the website either. Um, so I just think this town, in terms of our meetings, everything could be a lot more accessible uh, to those that you want to get involved. Um, and secondly, as people mentioned earlier, your letter uh, that the town released on, on the Facebook page and otherwise uh, about, you know, I'm not going to justice everywhere, it's a threat to injustice anywhere, you know, um, all that. And you, you said that you, you stood in support uh I, I just think it's a little bit disappointing, uh, you know, for us to say that in a word, but to still stand by the statue, to still, uh, you know, have all of you unanimously agree that the accountability bill is an attack on police officers, you know. I think you, you know, you say you stand with those who feel there's injustice, but then when finally there's a chance to stand with them, um, I think you you know, that's not really the following through in action. That's not really, it's not really happening on behalf of the committee. Um, so I guess those are my big things. Is just, I, I just want to know how we can get more involved and, uh, you know, B, I want the committee to stand by their work. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to jump in at this point because um, I want to be very clear. Uh, our uh, town clerk uh, is still on, on uh, the meeting. And the town clerk posted the, the special meeting. We're required to have 24-hour notice, and it was on our, our uh, uh, town of Southington uh, 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 page. Uh, if you go on a town of Southington, you come to our town town page, and it was posted there uh, 24 hours prior to the meeting. Uh, it was an open meeting, and uh, anyone could have come and listened and spoke. And so when we have a special commit, when we have a special meeting, there's nothing underhanded about it. Time was of the essence. And so we posted it at 20, over 24 hours. That's all that's required because of the time sensitive nature of it. Uh, and, uh, certainly, uh, there are other opinions that, uh, might differ from yours at this point. But I just wanted to make that very clear, uh, that, uh, that that was posted in accordance with our policy and procedures. Um, uh, Mr. Lombardi, you said that you want, might want to say something there. I want to give you the floor if you want it, Tom. Yes, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I do follow up on what Brandon said. Um, 
and Val, Councilwoman DePaul and I were talking about it earlier. So I think it is worth clarifying, and I do understand the confusion. The meeting for the Southington, Southington Public School Coalition for Social Justice can be found on the Southington Schools website. It's southingtonschools.org, which is the uh, the home page. And then right in the middle of the page, it has a link where it says SPS Coalition for Social Justice Community Conversation. So that that would be the appropriate area. Um, so, Brand, agree with you, and hopefully by broadcasting it, and the board of ed members can do a little, or the the social justice group um, can can broadcast it a little bit more. So that's all. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Okay, uh, next please. Okay, Madam Chair, I am opening the microphone again for the. Folks who are on the telephone, it looks like I have all the telephone microphones open. Is there anybody who hasn't spoken who would like to speak now during public communications? Any call-in users who would like to speak during public communications? Your microphones are open. Okay, Madam Chair. It looks like uh, Melissa, Melissa, did you get that text? Wrong? Sure. It's, uh, Melissa said her chat wouldn't go through. She'd like to speak. Sure. Um, Madam Chair, I closed the I closed the telephone since uh, there was no call-in users who wanted to speak. So if we wanted to go back to Melissa, we can do that now. Sure. Hey, Melissa, what is your name and address for the record, please? Hi there, Melissa Holgren, 31 Birchcrest Drive in Southington. Sorry about that, Paul. I kept trying to push it through, but our connection was so shoddy after the storm. Um, I guess really quick, I didn't realize this was going to be, a, you know, St. Christopher's Columbus <laughs> again. Um, I just want to say I, I hope the council takes into consideration that the goings-on with Mr. Floyd and Christopher Columbus, in my opinion, and I, and I speak for many, Really, one has nothing to do with the other. Depending on what action is taken, I fail to see the correlation between the two. You guys have done a great job. You, you know, Board of Ed website has rolled out this social justice information session for people that wish to attend, and you guys are doing a great job. So I just wanted to say thank you very much, and a special thank you to you, Paul. I know I shouted you out a bunch of times for help in the storm. But you came through, and I appreciate what you did for those people on the other side of town. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, as, as far as the email goes, I, I, it, the, it was breaking up, um, so I don't know how that played into this. I didn't get this whole meeting, but um, I know for myself, I have to say, I sent my email directly to the town council, which I believe everybody else did as well. And um, I just think it's very sad that everyone's attacking the council chair over something that is so trivial at best. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, Madam Chair, I think we've covered everybody who was looking to speak. Thank you, Paul. I think uh, that, uh, that's terrific. Um, so I'm going to close public communication. And um, let's go into old business. So the first item, item A, is action on the public hearing. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the tax abatement as per the recommendation from the public hearing. Do I have a second? I'm sure I'll second that. Mike, do Thank you, Mike. 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 Uh, 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 roll, please. Yes. 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 Lombardi. Yes. Morelli. Yes. Romero. Yes. Coolis. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Thank you, everybody. Very good. Uh, item B, uh, Christopher Columbus statue. Uh, does anyone anyone want to speak on this? We're just going to have a short time of being able to discuss it any further. I think we've heard everybody's uh, uh, arguments and requests uh, uh, very much. I will say this, though, before we go on. Um, as I had said earlier, the, uh, the petition uh, in favor of keeping the statue that was supposed to be in last month's uh, meeting, we did amend it. It is, it is actually part of, their, uh, part of the agenda and also part of the minutes of last month. And there were uh, 676 people who signed the petition online to keep the Columbus statue where it is. Subsequent to that, today, uh, the, uh, the, uh, our administrative assistant, Lara, received a uh, petition uh, asking for the removal of the statue. And I, I'm not sure exactly how many names were from Southington. Uh, there had been thousands of names from all over the world signing the petition. Uh, so the author of the petition uh, cut it down to people who said they were from Southington. However, it came, uh, it came in at 1.20 this afternoon. And all of those names had no addresses or phone numbers with them. There is no way for us to validate that. So uh, a note went out to the author of the petition asking her to make an appointment with Lara so that they could, uh, that Lara could help her validate all of those names. That's what the petition that came in at the first meeting did. The author came in and they went through, went through the whole list of all of the names. And uh, so that offer has been made. I'm not sure uh, uh, when or if uh, the author will take advantage of it, but the author, the author is out there for the author of the, uh, uh, the petition. Uh, I also received um, three other petitions uh, today. The first one is called Southington United, uh, and on this petition, we the understand respectfully ask the members of the town council to keep the statue of Christopher Columbus at the Municipal Center. There's 303 validated names, addresses, and phone numbers on the Southington United um, petition. Uh, and so we will add that to that group. And then there was a God Bless America petition that was circulated. We, the undersigned citizens of Covington, oppose any effort to remove the statue of Christopher Columbus from its place of honor at the John Lysdale Municipal Building. And there were 69 uh, names that were validated uh, through addresses and phone numbers uh, on that petition, bringing the total number of uh, signed petitions that were validated, the names were validated at Southington residents at 1,048 members to keep the statute. Uh, as I said, the uh, petition that uh, came in at 120 this afternoon, she will be able to come and validate her uh, petition. Uh, and if it is done, we will uh, send it out uh, in uh, an, uh, for a September meeting. Uh, so that, I wanted to get the petitions all out. So uh, we have them. The ones that came in today, we will attach to our minutes today. As I said, they are, are validated. They are they've gone been gone over and uh, are bona fide uh, citizens. So, um, so now let me open it up, please, to any communication that we might want to uh, have today as a council um, and. Uh, uh, so let me open it up. Anybody have anything they would like to discuss tonight concerning Christopher Columbus? Madam Chair? Yes. Hi. Um, I'd like to make a motion uh, to form a, the commission as it was described in the draft document distributed to the council on July 13, 2020, mm -hmm. with the charge of determining a united path forward for Southington regarding the Christopher Columbus statue with the understanding that any suggested revisions to the draft shall be incorporated pending consensus of this council. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? No second. Okay, Chris. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Is there discussion? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a discussion? Anybody? I'm sorry. Uh, does anybody want to discuss this any further? Chris or Chris or yeah, Alan? Let me just give a little bit of context and the rationale. Uh, Mr. Palmieri, Attorney DePaul, and I put forth this draft proposal because we want what's best for Sunnington. We feel a commission of stakeholders is a thoughtful approach to addressing this complicated social issue. It will move our town forward. It will avoid story with the and we believe it will unite us as a community rather than divide us. Is there any other discussion? I, I can just elaborate on that. The, the, the point the point I was trying to make, and Vicki, thank you for getting back to me so quickly. I, I know we, we've been in communication, so I do really appreciate, um, you know, our communication getting back and forth with that. Um, we just felt it, it, it's such a divisive topic right now. This would be a way to ensure the people um, that are impacted directly by our decision will have a voice in a more calm, controlled, collaborative format. Um, especially seeing as it was originally donated to us, this would give everyone an opportunity, again, in, in just a little bit more structured format than even our meeting format here and the public hearing format, uh, you know, a, voice, a chance to sit down at the table and, and listen to each other because there's clearly a divide um, between the people that want to keep it and the people that want to remove it. So um, we really feel that this could be a, a compromise. Again, I want to point out to the, to the whole council, Vicki, I think you made a, a valid point. We originally proposed um, a time frame maybe up to January just because we wanted to give enough time for thoughtful discourse. However, I understand your point in that, um, you, you know, that this has lingered a while, especially in the summer because we only have one meeting versus our um, twice a month meeting. So, you know, we're open to any type of compromise, we're open to any type of collaboration with you guys, whether it be just, uh, you know, making a recommendation at the very next council meeting rather than, you know, having it go out for months. So we really are trying to, to work and be collaborative with you. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to say anything on this? Yeah. 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 Um, just, just briefly, um, just to also bring up that as as we heard from a resident, you know, Christina Volpe, that there may be there may be some other alternatives here. And until you get everybody around the table, everybody talking and, and thinking about some of these things, thinking outside the box, um, you know, maybe there's an alternative that you know, that we're not we're not thinking about. So I, I just would like to have that be considered as well. Great. Thank you so much. Is there are there any other uh statements that anybody wishes to make? Hearing none, uh, let's call the vote. Adam uh, Clark? Okay. Yes, go ahead. Oh. Mm -hmm. Paolo? Yes. Egypt? No. No. Burnley? No. Palmeira? Yes. Foolish? Yes. Chapensky? No. Yeah, no. No. Okay. Um, are there any other motions before us? Madam Chair? Yes. Madam Chair, I, I would like to make a motion uh, to have the Christopher Columbus statue removed from the municipal building uh, by the town and under the direction of the town manager, and ask that it be moved to uh, private property or that it be stored. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, was that Chris Palmer? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, any further discussion on this? Uh, Madam Chair? Uh, this is okay. Bill Beasick. I'd like to make a quick comment. Uh, uh, Bill, it's Bill, kind of yeah. hard to hear you. Your signal was bad, Bill. Maybe you can move to another spot. I'm sure Yeah, sorry. I'm on my phone. Um, That's better, Bill. I'll pass. I'll pass. I'll pass my comment. Okay, Val. So, Madam Chair, I just I have in a, a short statement um, just because this is uh, so important, so I just wanted to collect my thoughts. If, if it's okay if I read that? Yes, certainly. Okay, thank you. Um, 
I, I make this motion after reading and rereading the numerous emails that we received, listening to our residents that came forward at the public hearing, we phone calls and text messages and talking to people in town. It has clearly divided our community, which is sad and disheartening. However, issues of this magnitude tend to do that. I would like to thank all of the people who did speak out on both sides of this issue. I know for some that it was emotional, difficult, and even painful, and I acknowledge their courage. Many of us are aware that there is a movement in this country that is long overdue, a movement toward justice and equality for all people. As a town council member, I felt that I needed to narrow my focus to our town and our residents and really listen to what was being said. At times, what was said was not pleasant and it was humbling and it was actually challenging to hear. I heard many residents say that they do not feel welcomed and included, they do not feel that their voices are making a difference in our town, and they don't believe maybe that they are valuable members of our community. For me, the Christopher Columbus statue to many in our community represents racism, injustice, and brutality. The statue is on town property, and so it does unequivocally send a message that our town, even now knowing of the history surrounding Christopher Columbus, does not truly embrace and care about all the residents if we allow the statue to remain. I, the prejudice that is felt by many in our community to me is more compelling and it outweighs any benefit that the statue may have on public property. If the statue remains, I believe that it contributes to the oppression of many of our family, friends, neighbors, and fellow townspeople. As a town council, at this time in the history of our town, we have an opportunity to do better because we know better. If we believe in equality and inclusion, we need to believe in it for all people in our town, and the removal of this statue is an action step toward that goal. We signed a statement not too long ago, which was entitled, The Time for Action. We asked people to raise their voices and we promised to listen. After listening to everyone who raised their voice and then weighing the arguments on both sides, I believe it is clear that we have a duty to take action and have the statue removed from public property. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair, uh, is my service better than Bill again? Yes, thank you, Bill. Go ahead. Madam Chair, I, since we're, we're, you know, this is, uh, you know, a pretty monumental decision and vote has been put forward, I just want, for the record, it's kind of gratuitous, but I do want it on the record, that when the decision to make the, stat, make the statue was, the town did not own the property. It was leased property, and I want that in the record very clearly, that it was not owned property when the decision was made. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Um, anything else? Anybody? All right. So there is a motion on the floor. Um, uh, we certainly, I would just say this before, prior to us uh, voting on this, we have heard, um, uh, we have heard a lot of different opinions. And it doesn't take away from the statement that was drawn up after uh, the George, George Floyd uh, murder. But we have to look at all of our residents. And there was passion on both sides. And so however uh, however this, this motion uh, proceeds, uh, I just want to reassure the folks on either side of the issue that your voice does matter. And that we do, all of us, come together. Let's deal with this, come together, and make Southington better. So um, having said that, uh, I'm going to uh, call the vote. Um, so Madam Clerk, uh, would you please call the roll? Del Santo? No. DePaulo? Yes. Egypt? No. Lombardi? No. Morelli? Moving a statue does not enable justice and equality for all in Southington. No. Paul Mary? Yes. Fuller? 
I want the record to reflect that I think it's a shame we're forced to make a vote that divides our community. It's a failure of leadership in so many ways, and I'm forced to vote yes. Suspensky? No. Diana? Um, I think that it, we owe it to the voters, to the people that were passionate uh, on both sides to give them a decision that it's not right or fair to prolong this thing any longer, that all of our citizens matter, their voice is heard. And that is a terrible statement to make, Chris. We're all trying to do what's right for our community. This is not division. But to prolong it and kick the can down the road would be just to make it even more painful and more divisive. I vote to leave the statue where it is. The motion, yeah, the motion is defeated, and uh, the statue remains. I will just say this, the statue, uh, there is no interest on this council majority to bring back the issue of Christopher Columbus during this term. And uh, I want to just leave it there. Uh, if anyone has anything uh, they would uh, like to uh, uh, discuss, we're certainly always open. You can uh, pick up the phone and call. As a matter of fact, you can call uh, or text me at my, uh, at my uh, email address at uh, trianov at southington.org. So I'm sorry that that bothered a few people today. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, Item C, action on the Board of Finance Minutes. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the July 29th, 2020 Board of Finance Minutes. No, second. Thank you, Chris. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries unanimously. Item D, the action. Uh, uh, um, uh, on the ordinance appropriating uh, 2000, uh, $2, 2,500,000 for costs related to the design and construction of a backup well, well number 10 for the Southington Water Department, well number 9, and authorizing the issuance of $2,500,000 in bonds, notes, and temporary notes, and other uh, obligations to finance the appropriation. Do I have a motion? Madam Chair. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm, Madam Chair, I'd just like to explain this if I would, or? Yes, please do, uh, Mr. Ricardo. Okay. Um, obviously, some of you have seen this before. I think I, you have my memo, but I just want to explain to the public that the council did already vote to approve this in May, um, but there's very strict advertising guidelines when it comes to bonding. So the advertising guideline was missed on this one. Uh, so uh, we need to re-vote on it and we'll advertise it as quick as possible. The bond council uh, said this is the best course of action. Uh, the money isn't necessary until February or March, so it didn't slow anything down. But we do want to make sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed before it goes out the bond. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to reapprove re the ordinance appropriating $2.5 million for well nine for the Water Department. Very good. Do I have a second? Second. Very good. Um, any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Yes, I will. Any other discussion? Hearing none, let's call the roll on this, please, Madam Clerk. Del Santo. I'm too much. <laughs> he's nodding his head yes. Oh, he's nodding his head yes. Okay. You know, yes, yes. There you go. There you go. Yes. Paolo. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Lombardi? Yes. Pirelli? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Fuller? Yes. Patrensky? Yes. Cheyenne? Yes. Item E, action on the library construction grant. Motion to Can I make a motion? I believe Mr. Yeah. Palmeira was first. All right. I'll take you. Approved. Thank you. Did you want to second that? Sure, second. Okay, very good. Uh, any discussion on the construction grant for the library? If I could just make a comment thanking, I, I, I don't know if Mary's still here and Christy here, thank you for understanding, working with the council. Obviously, these times are certainly unprecedented, so thank you for understanding our decision to 
uh, delay this on behalf of our residents. Very good. Thank you. All right. Um, let me uh, uh, let me just uh, call the vote. All those in favor of the action on the library construction grant, signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the veranda roof replacement on the barns. Chris yes. Poulos, make a motion. Yes. Okay. Chris Poulos has made a, a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second to that. Mike Del Santo. Mike Del Santo seconds it. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Are there any opposed? Very good. Thank you. It, 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 it passes unanimously. Action on the marketing uh, contract, please. Item G. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, this is Mike Del Santo. Okay. Sorry, Jim. Sorry, Mike. I make a motion to approve that contract. Very good. Is there a second? I'll second. Mike Del Santo. Thank you, Mike. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any uh, opposed? Thank you very much. It passes unanimously. Uh, item H, Mike Del Santo. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the tax abatement for sign pro. Very good. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Chris. Um, uh, are there, um, is there any discussion on this at all? Hearing none, let me call the uh, motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Item I. Uh, steep grant. This is for the steep grant. Yes, it is. Make the motion to approve uh, the town manager to make application for this latest steep grant. And I'll second that. And thank you, Fish, you're seconding it. Absolutely. Uh, is there any further discussion? I'm sure. I just want to say it's great that, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Perillo and I'm in the show are always looking for ways to help uh, Summington. Economic development is so important, especially during these work of times. So any help that we can get from the government is good by me. So thank you very much, Mr. Town Manager and Lou Perillo. Great job. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, are there, uh, are there, are there anyone, uh, is anyone opposed to this motion? Very good. Thank you. Um, it passes unanimously. Um, uh, um, new business under tax refunds, uh, Councilman DePala? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the tax refunds that are outlined in our packet. So be the second. Thank you, Bill. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, I don't. I haven't heard any opposition, so I assume that it's passing unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, we have two appointments, uh, both of which I'm going to ask for a table on for this meeting, and uh, we'll have them for our next meeting. Uh, may I have a motion to table both of them? Move, Madam Chair, the table. Mike Del Santo. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Very good. Uh, uh, any discussion? Hearing I'm none, uh, all those, I'm sorry. Hearing none, uh, I, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And I don't hear any opposition. Thank you very much. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. To adjourn, Madam Chair. I hear a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I didn't think so. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you all. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night now.